Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer for the 11th of February, a Friday. Let's begin with our introductory responses. The second verse is yours. I will repeat it. This will prepare us for our traditional confession. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and God will sustain you, and God will sustain you. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, together, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens together. The God of our salvation, who bears our burdens. Let us confess our sins against God, ourselves, our neighbors, and creation itself. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God for the mercy of God. Lord, open our lips together and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7, the Venite. I encourage you to sing along or hum with me. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to God with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today is Genesis chapter 27, verse 46, to 28, chap uh, verse 4, and then picking up the story of Jacob's dream at Bethel, and that is going to be verses 10 all the way through to the end of the chapter, verse 22. Reading from Genesis. Rebekah said to Isaac, I am sick and tired of Esau's foreign wives. If Jacob also marries one of these Hittite girls, I might as well die. Isaac called Jacob, greeting him and told him, Don't marry a Canaanite girl. Go instead to Mesopotamia, to the home of your grandfather, Bethuel, and marry one of the girls there, one of your uncle Laban's daughters. May God Almighty bless your marriage and give you many children, so that you become the father of many nations. May he bless you 
and your descendants as he blessed Abraham, and may you take possession of this land in which you have lived and which God gave to Abraham. Isaac sent Jacob away to Mesopotamia to Laban, who was the son of Bethuel the Aramean and the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. Jacob's Dream at Bethel Jacob left Beersheba and started toward Haran. At sunset, he came to a holy place and camped there. He lay down to sleep. Resting his head upon a stone, he dreamed that he saw a stairway reaching from earth to heaven, with angels going up and coming down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him. I am the Lord, the God of Abraham and Isaac, he said. I will give to you and to your descendants this land on which you are lying. They will be as numerous as the specks of dust on the earth. They will extend their territory in all directions. And through you and your descendants, I will bless all the nations. Remember, I will be with you and protect you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done all that I have promised you. Jacob woke up and said, The Lord is here. He is in this place, and I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, What a terrifying place this is. It must be the house of God. It must be the gate that opens into heaven. Jacob got up early next morning and took the stone that was under his head and set it up as a memorial. Then he poured olive oil on it to dedicate it to God. He named the place Bethel. The town that was once there was known as Luz. Then Jacob made a vow to the Lord. If you will be with me and protect me on the journey I am making and give me food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's house, then you will be my God. This memorial stone which I have set up will be the place where you are worshipped and I will give you a tenth of everything you give me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jacob is on his way to find a proper wife, and on the journey while sleeping on the ground, heaven is opened in a visionary dream experience for him. He sees Jacob's ladder. That is the folk interpretation of this. Jacob's ladder up into heaven in angels ascending and descending. This shows to Jacob, of course, who wakes up with a start in the morning. This is a holy place. It's a thin space where the dimensions between heaven and earth are very thin and spirit beings can pass between. No wonder Jacob is afraid. It's interesting to remember that in John chapter 1, verse 51, Jesus told the disciple that he would see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This indicates to us that Jesus himself is the bridge between heaven and earth, the only mediator between God and men, as mentioned in 1 Timothy 2.5. It does baffle us to consider that God is pouring out such blessings upon Jacob, who is a deceiver and who cheated Esau, his brother, out of his birthright and the blessing. This shows that God's ways are above your ways and mine, so difficult to understand. We wonder why God didn't choose someone of more integrity and commitment to the family. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. But listen to the blessings revealed in this dream. Firstly, the Lord reveals God's self to Jacob and identifies God's self as the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, so the family God. Secondly, the Lord promises the descendants will inherit the land on which Jacob is lying. And thirdly, they will be like the dust of the earth, so numerous. The fourthly, they will spread out to the east, west, north, and south. They will be a diaspora of people. Fifthly, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Sixthly, 
I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this place. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. What an encouraging and bountiful promise from the Lord's own mouth to Jacob as he begins a new adventure in his life. Remember, God is always at our new beginnings. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the Church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. We especially pray for peace in the city of Ottawa and other besieged cities here in Canada. We also pray for peace between Russia and the Ukraine. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. And Lord, this day, we pray for your special touch of healing to be upon Heinz, Ricardo, Helen, Eleanor, Mary, Tom, Ingrid, Rose, Natalie, Kayla, David, Clover, Ken, Senya, Mary, Daniel, Richard, and Joan. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God in Unionville and beyond, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now the peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit enfold you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Friday, TGIF. Really hope to see you in worship as we live stream on Sunday at 10. This is the first Sunday of folks worshiping in person at church beyond the little small skeletal team required for live streaming, but you are welcome to consider registering for worship. Love to see you. God bless you. TGIF. Have a great day.